All right, we're playing uh, Repentance. Don't worry about the streak. That's, that streak isn't for, for me to know and for you to find out. That being said, it might be a, a good time for us to take a look and, uh, you know, maybe just try to do something that we can actually accomplish with the character here. Forgotten alt path. Or forgotten true ending. Why not? Why not? Let's, let's try to get some momentum. <laughs> Let's try to get some momentum. QN, 6N, CN, E4. Looks like my streak. Hey, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, yet uh, you do have to keep in mind, I'm, I'm trying to beat like the hardest characters in the game. I, I did a bunch of tainted keeper runs this morning. Not necessarily insanely difficult, but when you're trying to force the, the hush and the... Oh, excuse me. When you're trying to force like the hush and uh, and boss rushes on every single run, it can uh, it can get a little touchy. It can get a little tricky. Dude, so far so good. They wouldn't give me a bad pill early. Most people don't know this, but there's like a a, a pill anti pity timer. The longer you play, the more likely you are to get a bad pill because the more likely you are to be strong. When you first get started, they don't. Uh, they don't give you bad pills, because they don't, you know, it's like you only get one chance to make a first impression. Now, you might say that it's not science, to which I say science uh, is the study of not knowing what you know. There we go, now we're talking. What science don't know won't hurt it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Just chill. I uh, Dude, I didn't even realize that the bone actually gives you, uh, or the... The, the bone plus parasite, I should say, actually gives you, like, a, a tear effect. It might be new. Almost lost that bone heart. How do I get health down in the first few rooms, then? We'll try not getting hit. Okay, you know what? We chill. We just chill. Just enjoying ourselves. I, I refuse to fight you. This is like Captain America the Winter Soldier. I'm with you till the end of the line. Look at this. Plum, consider yourself spared. Ooh, you're getting out of here. You're flying. You're done. You're done. Don't, this is the only attack that is any danger at all. Just fly out of here. Go on. Leave. Thank you. You know what we got to do next is like smack as she tries to leave. That's the that's the next step. <laughs> is give them. <laughs> As soon as they decide this isn't worth it anymore, that's when you go to town. That's when you do your real damage. It's just rude. Be that as it may. Okay, you know, it, this is a little spicy. We don't want to lose that bone heart. I'm willing to lose... Uh, uh, wait, I'm a fool. Why don't we just do that? <laughs> okay, and then we want to do Alt Path or True Ending. Either. Okay, let's do alt path. I mean, this run's not incredible so far, but it's, uh, we're early on here. I did forget that the soul existed. I mean, you, you gotta cut me some slack on this, like, it's actually, like, the most complicated multitask in, probably in, in life's history, and this is the voice I use when I'm being facetious, but I'm, uh, I'm not being facetious. Like, you're playing as characters you've never played before. Well, not the Forgotten, but every character's a little different. And, you know, this isn't Isaac, uh, you know, 1999, where a little different is like, this one's got slightly more HP. You know, this is uh, Isaac 2021, where, uh, you know, it's like, and then you, you don't get any item rooms anymore, but if you spend enough money, then you get super shops, but the shops still cost money, but you also have money equals power, deals with the devil, cost money, deals with the angel, cost uh, luck, you know, like, it's crazy. Um, and then on top of that, you're, like, trying to banter. And then on top of that, you're, like, reading chat, scrolling by at, like, you know, five lines a second. Like, there's, the old brain's getting, it's getting saturated at, like, a record pace right now. Oh. You're trying to focus on, you know, just like 
walking and dodging and, and so on and so forth, then people are hitting you with comments. Like, just so you know, if you happen to pick up Proptosis on this run, Proptosis and Plum, uh, plum Flute used in conjunction with one another gives you a 2% increase to, you know, your dividend yield. And you're like, what, what's going on with uh, Proptosis? And then they're like, oh, you don't have it yet. I was just trying to confuse you, like, in case it showed up in the future. And you're like, what the heck's going on, man? It's, it's, I'm, just, I'm just trying to keep... Reality straight here. Don't hit me again. Okay, we got to get this bone heart going. Okay. Pop this down. Run for your life. Great, great damage. Thank you, Plum Flute. And goodbye, Plum Flute. You did your best. That's all I could ask. Stay moving. Stay still, stay moving. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Little spicy, but dude, another bone heart on top of that. That's solid stuff. Don't pick this up yet. This is very simple. It's a tough call. The nail's really good, though. And, uh,. Sack Alter does nothing for us. Hold on, though. Check this out. <laughs> he's a genius. Whoa. Okay, he's a genius. Now, this does nothing for us. But what if we somehow got a charge here? And then we'd be talking, right? We can't do it, but, like, wouldn't that be something? We're gonna we're gonna keep rolling the nail. That was just to demonstrate that I you know, I got the knowledge to get me into college. <laughs> and we did. I guess we did lose half a demon heart to do it, but at least we got. Uh, at least we got sack altar out of the rotation. Okay, there goes the bone heart. So that you know, easy come, easy go. Mm, don't do this. Do as do as I say, not as I do on that one. At least we had fun on the way. Exactly. It's the it's the friends we made along the way. You could check the shop for a buddy in a box and then possibly sack it. Look, I mean, come, you you could you know sell your car because possibly you could like quantum tunnel to work as well. We we got to deal with like realistic percentages here, okay? Not like walking in to a shop hoping to get a half price buddy in a box in an item pool that has like eighty items in it or something like that. Like this, it's a little much, you know. <laughs> it's anyway. This is, by the way, this is, I'm, and I'm just setting the tone early. This is why we're playing less Repentance today. My my patience for the extremely hyper-specific backseating is essentially at, like, 0% right now. I really, and it, you know, is partly my responsibility as well. Don't get me, or maybe, like, exclusively my responsibility. But, like, why why is the vibe, the, the streamer D chat vibe, like, so off right now? This is, it's meant to be entertainment. It's not meant to be instructional you know we could just we could all just hang out and have a good time together don't don't need to be like the binding of isaac 101 college class like every single day we could just ask some questions you know how do you feel about baja fresh or something like that and i'll be like i've never eaten at baja fresh because they don't have it here and then you know we'll, we'll live our lives figured it's better to my bone heart to set that tone early rather than like let it fester forever. Okay, I'll take a speed upgrade. How do you feel about Baja Blast? I've also never had Baja Blast, but that's because I've never been to Taco Bell. They have it here, but it's uh anytime I had the opportunity to go to a KFC Taco Bell, I always went to the KFC. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, this is this is going pretty poorly so far. <laughs> this is going very poorly so far. Get out of here.
Come on. Just pop up. Well, yeah, give me give me a taste of your elbow. I don't mind. Oh, that oh, I didn't I thought it was just slow creep. Okay, take me back. Take me back. <laughs> Yo, Ice Baby is insanely good. I think that's we don't want to get that boss as the forgotten because I like don't possess the self-control to play as the spirit. I possess the self-control merely to smack things with my bone. That's a bad start. How do you feel about cheesecake? I'm going to pivot off of that to, to answer another question. Um, or not another question, just to be braggadocious with no meaning. Many years ago, and by many I mean like two on the NLSS, I... Uh, I was asked, what's your favorite dessert? There was a period of time on the NLSS where essentially, like, my only reason to exist was to be made fun of by my friends who were two years younger than me for, like, having some old man opinions. Um, and this was one where I felt like I took a very, very undeserved amount of heat, personally. Um, they said, what's your favorite dessert? And I said, you know, I don't eat that many desserts. And this is not a like an old man thing. It's just like that's how I I was as a, a child even. I would always try to get like fruit instead of like, I don't know, chocolate cake or something like that. And I I, I stand, you know, undefeated to this day as a result. However, I said I don't get that many desserts, but I like um I like a cheese plate. And the people were like, a cheese plate? That's ridiculous. I would never in my cheese for dessert. What is going on here? This doesn't make any sense. And then, wouldn't I, I was mocked for days, by the way, on on social media, on on the subreddit. People thought it was it was being a joke. People thought I, I was deliberately misrepresenting myself. Not the case, uh, slightly. Wouldn't you know it? Was, was about a week and a half ago, Bear Taffy tweeted, "Hey, I'm really starting to get into cheese lately." I, I seem to recall Bear Taffy being the one who spearheaded uh, most of the mocking in this case, to be honest with you. I, I believe uh, it, I, I can still hear the tone of his voice. Hey, hey, NL, what, what kind of desserts do you like? Hey, thanks for the genuine question, friend of mine. I enjoy a uh, cheese plate from time to time. Uh, you fool! You've fallen into my trap by honestly answering the question. Well, you should have done. Hold on, we give me this. Wait, we don't need this. Yeah, but yes, we do. That's actually pretty good. I, I was like, we don't need it. We got a good trinket. Then I remembered it doubles your trinket effect. Dude, I, cheese. You'll see cheese as a dessert. For real, not at like you know. Taco Bell, but you'll see it. France is the land of cheese and we eat it after dinner. Case closed. Yeah, exactly. Just because they don't have it at Panera or, you know, the Kentucky Fried Chicken drive through doesn't mean it's not a real dessert. Okay, what is Strength? Strength, we need less than here, Afan. Okay, take me down to the next floor. Do, do, do. Why not use it? Well, you know, you put a lull at the end, so I don't think you're being serious, but if we get no spirit hearts, I would rather use two spirit hearts to take a deal with the devil as the loss, then pop the hero font. If you step through that in the debugger, that'll leave you with two spirit hearts at the end of the day, uh, versus popping the hero font now, and if we get no spirit hearts, okay, well now it's uh, academic, but we would have been left with one spirit heart in the reasonable case where we got no spirit hearts down here. Now... We're down uh, a strength card, but in all likelihood, we would have died with the strength card in my uh, in my pocket anyway. So, no harm, no foul. Which artificial cheese is the worst? The the goo cheese from like you know those Nabisco like cracker uh, packages that have like saltine crackers, long saltines, and then they have like the goo cheese inside of them as well. Those are, that's real nasty. That is, uh, something's not right with that. I think it's just bad cheese whiz. 
But like that that stuff is essentially just You know what? I'd rather do it this way. That stuff is essentially just uh it's just orange salt, which is, you know, it's not poison, but it's just kind of disgusting. <laughs> There we go. Dude, we, we got a real chance on this one. I'm glad we lost the other one. So we it that walked so that this one could run. Favorite cheese? I don't know, like I'm I'm still pretty basic when it comes to cheeses. I still do at the end of the day, like if you gave me the choice between a few cheeses. I'm like uh any any orange cheese. Is, is pretty high on the list. Like, I, I like a, a cheddar. Maybe like a two-year-old cheddar. But I also, you know, I enjoy like... Uh, last time I, I got some cheese, I got some red Leicester. You know, I decided to mix it up ever so slightly. And I was like, hey, I've never had this before. This is pretty good. Um, there's a Canadian cheese called Oka that's pretty sweet as well. I still got a long way to go. I, I rely on restaurants being open to expand my cheese horizons, so... It's been a, you know, it's been a bad time for that, which is a pretty minor, uh, pretty minor thing in the whole scheme of things, but. Yeah, everybody knows about Kazu Marzu, okay? It's always on Twitter, like, you know, white people will really say, like, vegetables are gross, but then they go out and they eat maggot cheese. And I'm like, bro, I haven't... D Look, I, I think beans are delicious to begin with, but then secondarily, I've never seen the maggot cheese. It's not like it's... It's not like they got it around at all at all possible locations, you know? I've never seen Kazu Marzu. I do understand... Like, it's, it's a disgusting idea. Look. And I bet it probably tastes... Not good to begin with, but um, I did you know that uh, with Kazu Marzu, you have to, you like, when you bite into the cheese, the maggots actually like jump out and hit you in the face. This is not a joke for the record. I, it's real. They like, they pop or something like that. Like, I don't know what causes it. But they, they pop or something like that and hit you in the face. I want that to be true. I, it, dude, I see, like, this is the most, like, highly represented cheese you'll never see in real life. I, I read about it on Twitter all the time. Because people are like, did you know people actually eat this? And I'm like, like, like six people. Like six people eat that. Let's be realistic. But I regret it. Yeah, you can also if you don't want to uh, to deal with the 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 popping, you can instead. Oh, that's so good, man. Um, you can instead uh, smother the maggots in a plastic bag before you eat it. And I did see someone say like it's one of those things that like uh, when most people try it, they tend to like it, and I'm like, I just feel like it's it's one of those things where if you are you know, it, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. You know that expression? Um, it's like that, but for cheese. If you're the kind of person who's like, I really want to try the maggot cheese, you're probably the kind of... I shouldn't have gone for it. You're probably the kind of person who's going to be like, Mmm, so good. Delicious. Because to, like, admit that it tastes bad would be like... You're not as as open-minded as other people, right? Like you're not as worldly. Same as the like the poop coffee, whatever it's called. I, I can't remember. Everyone, people know what it's called. Poop poopy colex, something like that. What's it called? You you know what I'm talking about. Someone in chat's gonna know it. Kopi Luwak. That's <laughs> that's the one I was thinking. Apparently, there's a second one, but. Yeah, they like, I can't remember if it's, if it's monkeys or cats, but they like feed the beans to the animal and then collect the beans after it passes through their digestive system and then make the coffee that way. Lemurs, okay. Like, dude, cats and monkeys combined equals lemurs, so 
What can I say? They're civets who are monkey s cats, dude. I don't know. Dead. I, I big ups to my brain on that one for like kind of almost being right. Um, but uh, yeah, it's the sort of thing where I'm like, even if it's good, I'm just like, there's a lot of good things. I guess like if if you, it depends on why you're trying it. I guess you know that that's where I draw the line. Are you trying it because you're like, I bet it tastes good? Or are you trying it to get like some kind of street cred from like, check it out, I'll eat anything that's disgusting? Because that, that changes the way I view it to some extent. Okay, now, this is good. Don't forget, you got to go into the mirror realm. Yeah, I think, it, I, I think it's a flex. That's just my take on it. Not everybody's going to agree, but... I, I see it as a flex. You know what? Hold on. We, we probably didn't need to do this, right? We could have just hit the control key. Maybe. Take me down. Take me in. Anyway. It's just not, not a food that's like high on my, my bucket list. But honestly, like all the, I've eaten some weird stuff. You know, I, I eat, uh, I eat some insects in in South Korea. I mean, it depends whether or not you see that as weird. People will be like, "That's not that weird." And then when they see like, uh, you know, mushroom on their plate, they're like, eh, "Touch the meat, get it away." But you know, insects and uh, chicken feed and you know. Korean blood sausage and stuff. I have. I've eaten whale. I've eaten horse, chicken hearts. You know, blah blah blah. Um, most of the stuff that would be on like my culinary bucket list is actually like, like a cheesy gordita crunch. <laughs> Feel like, if I could just if if I if I die before I get to taste the delectable nature of a. Uh, Cheesy gordita crunch, then it it will be uh, it'll be a wasted opportunity. Okay, I for I was just gonna say I forgot that these flies still exist. Very annoying to me. I can't seem to generate the range necessary to hit you. I knew it was coming, man. I knew it was coming. <laughs> those it's those dang flies, man. Everything else is totally fine. The flies could not be hit. I should have just become the, the loss to go through the window. I should also just learn not to go through the door. Like, that's... Or not to go through the boss fight when you go through the mirror, I mean to say. I've never eaten Sir Stroming. I mean, if I was gonna... If I was going to record it for a video, I might consider it, but like just for uh just for curiosity's sake at this point in my life, I think I'll I'll probably avoid it. I got nothing left to prove. <laughs> I think for I have for me anyway. No, I never had a Carl either. The um the fermented shark? I don't think so, anyway. I've been, you know... Some of those Icelandic memories are a little fuzzy. I imagine it's bad. Because it's known. Yeah, Kate was talking about how I don't like acorn jelly. Is absolutely right. Like, I, I've been getting a little bit of a reputation as a picky eater when it comes to Korean food. The, the thing I'm going to say, like, in my own defense, is that uh, it's not that I am a picky eater when it comes to Korean food. Is that a lot of the Korean food that comes from this, like, meal prep service has, like, the same four ingredients that I'm not a huge fan of. <laughs> so it, it it's like, you didn't like this dish or this dish or this dish. And I'm like, yeah, because they put, you know, kongnamul in each one. Which is just like... Uh, you know, it's bean sprouts, but like, I'm just not that into them. I'll eat it, but I'm like not that, uh, I'm not that big of a fan, I guess. 
you'll excuse me. Like, they'll give you, like, a, you know, Yukge Jong or something like that. And I'm like, Yukge Jong is, is delicious. I love it. And then they're like, actually, it's Kongnamul Yukge Jong. We just, like, to fill out the soup, we put 12,000 bean sprouts in it. And I'm like, you, you took a good thing and you just, I don't know why, but you just tilted it slightly into a situation like I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of. And don't even get me started on the, uh, on the Budeji game, man. I'm, I, it's just, it's a little much for me. It's a little much. <laughs> I mean, I think I would eat, uh... Look, I refuse to take all these deliberate mispronunci mispronunciations from chat in uh, in stride after the faux fa debate we got into over luck be a landlord. You can just you can put it through your Google Translator, okay? When I when I anglicize the name, people are like, "In today's climate, that's insane of you." And then when I say the real name, they're like, "Pete Buttigieg? What are you talking about, Kappa Face?" But. I'll, I'll, I would eat any food, I think, that I have never eaten before if the main reason people eat the food is because it's delicious rather than the main reason people eating it being because of the fact that it's weird. Not all foods are consumed because they're delicious. Some of them are, are consumed, in my opinion at least, for, for street cred. Like Sir Stroming, I don't think anybody is, uh, is eating that for pleasure, unless they're like a, an 86-year-old sailor from Uppsala, like I, right? That's, that's my, my take on it at least. Swedish people do? I don't think so. Because, like, not on mass, is, and I, I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to this, but, like, anytime I've seen a video where, like, someone goes to Sweden, there's always, like, some six foot eight Swedish guy who's like, yeah, we all eat this over here. And then they open up the can, and literally everybody that's around is gagging, like, within a, a 30 meter radius of where the can was opened. That's a, I never thought about that. Cucumber tastes like watermelon rind. People love it. Watermelon rind tastes like cucumber. People hate it. <laughs> I will... The, close. It's close to, to being apt. Because watermelon rind is it's firmer. Which could be a plus or a minus, I guess, depending on who you ask. But then secondarily, it's it's got like a little tartness to it, you know? It's got like a little sourness that is that is absent the uh, in the cucumber. Don't shoot me. I liked the fat bastard impression you did in today's Isaac. Oh, thank you. Okay, Dr. Evil. Let's make a deal. Wait, I lost the accent. I don't know, become Littlefinger again. You get your mojo. You keep your money. I get your baby. I, we, we can't... I mean, I suppose we could, but... We don't have to do the bit yet again. But, um... It always... They, they really gloss over the fact... In Austin Powers that Fat Bastard is an aspiring cannibal. Like, he, they're like, he... Austin Powers does say, you really are a fat bastard. Just in case you didn't get the joke to begin with. Like, that's his name. Um, but it's like nobody ever goes like... Li Dr. Evil's response to fat bastard wanting to eat Mini-Me is... Right. So it's a little bit understated is all I'm saying. And then I did, I never got an answer over whether Scottish people are offended that uh, Mike Myers took a Scottish actor's role by putting on the Scottish accent during uh, Shrek. 
Like, I, I feel like he took he took a role that could have gone to, like, Billy Connolly or something like that, right? People in the comments said nobody was offended. That's not for them to tell me. I'm here to tell them they should be offended. Billy Connolly and Ewan McGregor should have played Shrek. Billy, Billy Connolly would have been a great Shrek. Ewan McGregor, I'm not sure if he's much of a voice actor. Because he just sounds like he's from Coruscant. Let's mix it up. I don't mind that. Yeah, I, here, here's a question for you. Has Mike Myers been in a good movie? And the answer is yes now that I think about it. But it's it, you got to think for a second. Has Mike Myers been in a good movie where he didn't put on an accent? He puts on an accent in all the Austin Powers, all the Shreks, and also in Inglorious Bastards. The answer is Wayne's World 1, I think. But... <laughs> ah! He was indeed in, in Inglorious Bastards. He played the guy who introduces another guy, I think it might have been Brad Pitt, to uh, Winston Churchill. I'm looking for the mirror, the mirror fire, just give me a moment here. He died, for real, yeah, no joke. Oh, he introduces Michael Fassbender. I thought you just said Michael Fassbender for no reason. And I was like, why is everyone talking about Michael Fassbender? And then, you know, I was going to say Michael Fartbender. Thought that could have been funny, but... Whatever happened to Michael Fassbender? It's just, Michael Fassbender is like the, the best actor who takes the worst roles. He, don't get me wrong, he's been in some great stuff as well. But the fact that this guy is also in like... The, the bad X-Men movies, and then all of the Ridley Scott aliens. I, have you seen um, Alien Covenant? There's some, like, truly bizarre stuff that happens in that, uh, in that movie. Like, Michael Fassbender does a scene against himself where he says, You hold it, I'll do the fingering. Like, it, it, they knew what they were doing there. Yo, you can still swap here. It's just... Yeah, Michael... I, I like Michael Fassbender as an actor. He's been in some good stuff, man. He's all... Like, like, why the hell is he in, like, Prince of Persia, man? Was it because his wife was in Tomb Raider? Or not Prince of Persia, sorry. Assassin's Creed. Totally different properties, uh, by the way. I guess uh, Alicia Vikander, she, she was going to be in Tomb Raider, and he's like... I can't let my wife get one over on me. I'm also going to play the lead in a movie based on a uh, third-person action franchise that probably won't be that good to begin with. Yeah, that's his wife, man. Boss challenge room is open. I'll allow it. I'll allow this one. What's the Oh, you're going to you're going to get me onto some negativity when you ask this cuz you you say what's the best movie it was well worth it based on a game and I don't have an answer for you. But what I do have is that I was kind of I wouldn't say hyped, but I was like people have been pretty positive in the buzz for the Mortal Kombat HBO Max movie. Then they released a scene today where like Jax crushes some dude's head. And I was like, I gotta be honest, I think it kind of looks like it was made by mouth. <laughs> it's violent, don't get me wrong. And that, that doesn't offend me. I was more just like, I, I kind of expected it to look like, uh, I don't know, like it was made by like a legitimate film studio, but it kind of looks like it was made by like a, like a Ryerson student. No offense, if you go to Canada's number one school for media studies, but like...
Okay. We're good to go. We've taken a while here, but that's okay. At least it was violent, I guess, which is kind of like what you want out of uh, out of it. But at the same time, I was like, I don't know. It just didn't look. Uh, just, I don't know. It just didn't look right. <laughs> something about it just looked like like it was. I mean, I guess obviously it was like shot on a green screen or something like that. Because they didn't actually go to you know like. Nether realm and then fight on a rickety old bridge on top of a spike pit, but I don't know, man. I'm skeptical. Yeah, it looks so li uncanny valley is one way to describe it. Anyway, so again, sorry for the Ryerson slander. You gotta pick a school, and like, you know, I make fun of my own alma mater enough. There's only like 20 universities in Canada, and you know. Pretty much everybody knows all of them, except for Lakehead. Don't. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. I'm telling you, I, so we're doing the This Is Halloween thing right now, but I'm also tell, telling you that, like, um... Who... The uh, Boss Rush song is Alexander Hamilton. That you can't tell me it's not inspired by it. What are the stereotypes? Sure. Of every um, Canadian university you can name? Uh, well, I, I can't really speak on that, okay? There's a few you can, you can get to for sure. Um, like, I didn't know this because I grew up in Kingston. I didn't know what the stereotype was for Queens. I th at the time, it was a, a well-regarded school. Then when I got there, everyone was like, Oh yeah, Queens is like the, st the school you go to when you're from Toronto and you're rich. And you want to get away from your parents for your undergrad. You could go to U of T, but you could go to a school that at the time was almost as good. And you could also like party it up a little bit. I didn't realize until I got there. I was like, I, you know... I thought it was a school that was in, uh, was just enjoyed for its academic rigor, but that's apparently that was not the case. Um, I'm trying to think of like the the other stereotypes that I know. Like I know that uh, Waterloo and Laurier have like a rivalry. It's like if you go to Waterloo for like. Math or computer science or optometry, because those are the only programs that they have. You spend 60% of your time in class, and then you spend the other 40% of the time telling everybody you know that they call uh, Wilfrid Laurier University the high school across the road. Little, little snobby. And, but you know what? They've been taken down a peg because everybody was like, oh my god. Uh... Did you know Research in Motion is here? Did you know they make Blackberries here? And then the company, like you know, fell from grace in a huge way, so... Things have, you know, I, they got their own problems to deal with, let's put it that way. Um, I don't know the stereotypes for, for the British Columbian universities. Like, I got nothing to say about UBC except for the fact that it's like the most gorgeous campus I've ever seen in my life, and the fact that it costs the same to go to as other Canadian schools is like, is not fair to the other Canadian schools. It's like this, the same way, like, you know, in a in a, a sports league, you're like, you got the opportunity to play for, like, the same amount of money in either, like, New York City or, you know, Dayton, Ohio. Like, how are you supposed to compete with, with Dayton? That's where Guided by Voices is from. Yeah, UBC is, is sick, man. I mean, honestly, I bet SFU is cool, too. It, it has less of an academic pedigree, but I already I said this a couple streams ago, but like um, SFU is the school where if you went to the school that I went to for programming, but it wasn't like hard enough for you, it didn't get your juices going, then you transferred to SFU. So I'm really like two rungs down the ladder. I don't remember. This is a vengeful spirit, but I don't really remember like what you do. 
take you anyway, but headstrong to take you on. Headstrong, I'll take on anyone. You got mentioned once in a University of Victoria course. Sick, dude. I'll, I'll take it, you know? I'm not allowed to go to the island right now because um, we're on, like, stage 17 quarantine. People, this is not a joke. Ontario locked down interprovincial travel, and then British Columbia was like, oh, you can't even, like, we're, we're going a step further than that. You can't even, like, move about the province anymore. But people from Alberta can come to the interior of BC, but people from Vancouver can't go to the interior. But, you know, it's good public health. It's just, I, I just think it's funny is all I'm trying to say. It's not like I'm going anywhere anyway, but... Um, hold on. I'm just trying to... Just thinking... We don't really care for Maggie's faith. We need the nail, man. We need the nail on this one. I did... I, I saw that you were here, Daniel. Uh, I, I laughed when I saw that post that was like... You can say that it was from a news reporter that said, like, you can see if this... Uh, you can tell me if this crosses the line, but I really just want to give Doug Ford a hug right now. And I was like, come on, man. Come on, you can't... You can't type that. Anyway, though. Um, yeah, we're, we're going down here. We're good. Jeez Louise. Yeah, not not that damn. Multiple Daniels. Don't count out. Bum, bum, bum. Swam at the It turns out you do not, under any circumstances, have to hand it to him. Uh, Spirit Heart? What did I tell ya? It's true, Doug Ford does look like he could give a great hug. He's always, like, standing in the hug position. You know, with, like, his arms awkwardly kind of, like, in the... in the knuckles pose? Like, do you know the way? Hug Ford. <laughs> Why'd you have to go after Blackberry? Because they were always... You weren't there, man. You go visit Malf at University of Waterloo. It's like summer 2008. They need her to be taken down a peg. They were on top of the world. Oh, uh, you go to Queens? Oh, uh, I live in Waterloo. Did you know that's where they make blackberries? They just wouldn't. They wouldn't freaking shut up about it, man. Did you know Jim... I saw Jim Ball Silly at uh, the Pita Pit last week. Hey, quit bragging, dude. They got above their station, man. They they started to think of themselves as, as better than Guelph. And that's where I draw the line. Half of Waterloo CS works at either Facebook or Shopify. Oh, dude, I'm just a great program. As from what I hear, anyway. Hello. 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 Donka, donka, da, don. Guelph? Yeah, it's G U E. It's, it's spelled like it's pronounced G U E L P H, Guelph. It doesn't, I, I mean, I've said this before, I don't think it really matters what school you go to, like, for your undergrad at all. Unless, you know, there's specific programs maybe where it actually matters, but, you know, if you're just getting, like, one of the, one of the classic, like, you know, I got a degree in X, then I think in Canada it doesn't matter too much. Like, people said, like, lol, Guelph. I have a friend who, uh, if you'll excuse me here, he got his... Bachelor's in Environmental Engineering at Guelph. Then he came to UBC to do his master's. And now he's like the... Some some role that I can't possibly understand. Like he's the vice president in charge of something at a wastewater treatment company. So like you can... You can definitely do well for yourself regardless uh, of where you're going. For undergrad at least. 
If you're getting your master's from the University of Arizona, I don't know. People might, they might start to take issue with that, but no, nah, seven, seven seals is bad, as we've touched on many times. Um, we don't, we don't touch that item. Forgot that it takes the whole heart. <laughs> My bad. Right. I'm not trying to insult the University of Arizona, okay? The largest Twitch streamer went there. I'm just trying to get my licks in. Also, isn't it, uh... All I... Like, American universities... All I know about them is, like... Harvard... Yale... Brown... Oxford... Not Oxford's British, sorry. Um... You know, all the all the Ivy League universities, I know that they exist. And then I know that um, the University of Arizona has a reputation. No, it's not University of Arizona. You're right. It's Arizona State. Arizona State has a reputation for, uh, for partying. Yeah, that's the one I know. What the heck is the University of Arizona? What was I talking about? And then, um... I don't know, Kate's- Kate's sister is always- she went to USC. I know, it's- she's- she's a big deal. She knows it, okay? Um... And she said that there's, like, a- a huge... USC versus UCLA rivalry um, to the extent that if you have like your car parked and you have a USC bumper sticker but it's like a UCLA neighborhood you your car might get vandalized or maybe you'll be killed that's the this is how the information was relayed to me and I I looked upon the information incredulously. I said, that can't possibly be the case. I, I simply don't believe it, but I, I default to the wisdom of, of chat on this one. <laughs> it's true 100%. Man. Not quite true, but you might get keyed. Aren't, this is being honest, like, aren't the people that go to those schools, and I'm jealous, aren't they, like, huge nerds? Aren't you just, like, big dorks? I thought you had to be, like, a, <laughs> I was gonna say, like, a no-life genius to go to one of those schools, but I mean that in a positive way. Ah, oh, there's, because there's, the sports teams are good, there's also some jocks, oh, those dang jocks. Ruining it for everybody, man. All state universities are like that. That's crazy. Like, hey, hey, hey. And there's like Canadian university rivalries. Like, Queens and Western, I guess, have like a rivalry. I just like... I don't know, man. I think... There goes my bone heart. I think the way... I won't say for everybody, but the way that I thought about... Um, university, like, changed a lot the more that I was in it. Like, in my first year of university, when you go to... Homecoming, and you see, like, all the alumni come out, and they got, like, 1978 jackets and stuff like that. You're like, wow, that's so cool! And they're, like, getting... their 50-year-old guys, like, getting hammered. And being like, I, you, this building didn't exist when I went here. You're like, that's sick, dude. That's crazy. I can't wait till that's me. By the time I was in fourth year and you'd see, like, old alumni coming back to get hammered with 19-year-olds, I was like, this is, like, the lamest thing I could ever imagine. I was so happy to just be gone. I mean, it's not to say that the university experience was bad, but I was like, look, I did my time. 
I had a I had a good time, and now it's time to let go and like move on. Otherwise, it just gets kind of sad. So, you know, you just say, I don't want to be like Van Wilder. I actually much preferred the vibe. Like, I mean, it's it different places in their lives, right? But I preferred the vibe, like, when I went to, like, night class for programming. There was no social life at all, and I was like, this owns. People were like, you know, hey, you want to hang out after class and, like, get a beer? They're like, I have four kids. I'm going to go home and get three hours of sleep, go to my job, and then come back, you know, next Wednesday to, to this class. Like... Now, it, not maybe the the best school to go to when you're 20, but you know when it, I was like 27 or something when I started, that was that was a good time. That being said, we did still steal the uh, enemy team's uh, mascot and then put it inside of a meat locker. It was the prank of the century. No, we did. We did. My the school I went to, as an adult, has no. Uh, it has no sports teams, <laughs> or or clubs of any sort. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, dude, I feel for people that are going to like, you know, they're of the age to be undergraduates in during COVID. Like this, it's just a bummer. Like you know, it is what it is, and you know, there's worse things going on. But I could definitely understand the complaints. It might seem petty, like people will probably tell you, like, oh, it's not that you don't get to party, but yeah, at least, like, you're not dead. It's true, don't get me wrong, but, like, I got to party, and my classes were, like, in person instead of online, and I'm also not dead. So, you know, I can see why people would be annoyed, <laughs> I guess. Quit bragging. I'm not bragging, I'm being sympathetic. I've done no damage to you, huh? Do you take damage? Is that like, is that a thing you do? I'm gonna take a hit here. I'm gonna take two hits here, but that's all right, because I got the hero font. Do they have frat parties in Canada? Um, the school that I went to, like, Queens, doesn't have a Greek society or anything like that. I'm gonna take it. I'm not afraid. But there's definitely still, I mean, the same kind of scene, but I don't know, like, not, not hazing, <laughs> I think. Not to the same extent, at least. I'm good to go. Yeah, 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 I'm good. To, yeah, 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 I'm good to go. What's Greek society? Well, okay, like... I don't really know, but you know how when you watch a movie about an American college? They live in, like, these weird houses where, like... The upperclassmen are just chilling, and then, like, the underclassmen are like, Hey, I ate all that crap you asked me to eat, and, uh, now poop it out and eat it again. It's like, that's... That's Greek society. If you ever watch a movie about American... Universities. Pretty much correct. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Do you <laughs> I just apologize. You know, I don't need to apologize. I've told every story before. But um, in my third or fourth year, I had, and we don't have like a, a frat culture, but you know, we still have the same kind of like social life, I guess, at, at my the school where I did my undergrad. In my third or fourth year, I had a, a partner in or a, like a group member in my business class who was in second year, and they lived in a house off campus, and they were like, Hey, uh, you were throwing, like, a beach party tonight. Like, everybody from this group's invited. So we went and we came out to it. Help, help me. Um, just, uh, I, you know, he w wasn't a particular fan of his, but I was like, you know, this will be weird, a beach party in, like, December in Ontario. 
And then when I walked into his uh, house, they had covered all of the... This, this sucks right here. They had covered their floors with a tarp and then filled their entire house for, for two floors with sand on the floor. Like, not overflowing, like, the whole bottom floor was submerged, but there was, like, sand on the floor of each of the levels. Um, and everyone was wa walking around in, like, beach clothes and stuff like that, right? And we were like, dude, like, does, is your landlord okay with this? And he's like, I don't know, probably, like, it'll be okay. And then we left, oh, jeez, dude, I'm kind of stupid. Um, we left uh, early to go someplace else. And, you know, forgot about it. Then, like, a week later, we had to do uh, some more stuff for our uh, project. That's pretty solid. And he was like, yeah, sorry, guys. Like, I can't make it. My landlord's real pissed about the beach stuff. So, like, I've got to go meet with him. And then I think he actually had to, like, uh, go to small claims court with his landlord or something. They at least had, like, lawyer meetings and stuff. Like, like he wasn't the... Sharpest tool in the shed. He did. All, he skipped the, like our major end of the year presentation as well to do a karate tournament. Like, just just to paint a little bit of a picture of what was going on in this guy's head. <laughs> it's kind. Of, look, it's not not based. Okay, it's a little based. And it's not like it was an important class, but you know he. His, his head wasn't in it. Wait, dude, that was... So I took in, in my second year... I took, like, intro to business or something as an elective. And I had... I don't know, hold on. I'm getting all twisted up. Maybe it was... It, it doesn't matter what year it is. Anyway, not in my first year. I took intro to business, and we had a four-person group for our final project. Two of the girls were friends, and we, we, it was me, an engineer, or an engineering student, and then um, these two girls, and we were like, hey, what do you, uh, what do you major in? And they're like, oh, we're undeclared, which was a huge red flag, because I don't even think you could be undeclared, like, at my, at my school. They just, just something, like, they didn't do. Um, and they were totally fine for the entire semester they they did their work you know that was assigned in the group projects and stuff like that and then when it came time to do the final report they just didn't respond to any of the emails so we me and the other student did the entire project and then we just told the professor like they didn't do anything on this so don't give them any marks for it because we were pissed off um and then they failed the class. And then they, right as the thing was due, they sent us an email that was like, hey guys, we weren't around this weekend, but we did a lot of work throughout the semester. So we hope that you'll like, you know, just understand why we couldn't help with the final project. And, you know, I don't, I don't even know if we emailed them back, but pretty soon after that, I'm sure they found out that uh, we saw through their elaborate ruse. <laughs> It's just, I think there's a lesson in there, you know? Like, if they had been like, hey, like, we have some... It wasn't a huge project, right? But if they were like, hey, we got something going on, we can't be there. Even if they were doing nothing, we might have just been like, ah, you know, it's just more frictionless to just, like... At least they let us know, give them the credit or something like that. But just to, like, ghost us and then be like, hey, we hope you'll, uh, you know, see it our way. Narrator voice. We did not see it their way. <laughs> the ghost thing was was. I'm not gonna ruin anybody's academic. I don't want to. I just want to get my degree and get out of there. But if you're gonna be a, a jerk about it, then you know, then play stupid games, win win stupid prizes. At least go to a karate tournament or something. You know. Okay. Don't lose the bone hearts. They're precious. I'm telling you, the, the alt path is not looking superbly likely, but... There's there's a shot. We do have nine lives. 
Um, just forget that for a second. We might... Ah, Polaroid's pretty good, but... I mean, we take... We, we should have done... Actually, maybe it doesn't matter what order you do this in. Not much, anyway. That's very good. Don't listen, you did the right thing. I don't know, I think most people were saying we did the right thing, honestly. Polaroid invincibility is, like, worse now, right? That being said, we really don't need damage. So, I think we're just gonna take the Polaroid. <laughs> Seems prudent. All invincibility is worse. The sun is up. The hearts are blue. It's doable. And so are you. Seems prudent. You know that song? One of, one of the better Beatles songs, no doubt. Although I still stand by Dear Dinosaur being a little bit better. <clears throat> Might as well. Bro, I hate this guy. I don't I don't know what you do, dude. <laughs> Just chill out. I'm surprised at the number of no's in chat. You gotta remember that. For chat, the Beatles are the most overrated band in history. Even though, like, Wolf Mother exists. No offense, Macros. Even though Greta Van Fleet exists. Well, this is... There's a certain degree of spice here. That, that could have gone worse. There were some good dodges there. Oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot about ACDC. That one is like, the other two I picked just to like, cause controversy. ACDC is the real right answer for most overrated band in history. They might even be good, like, oh, frick. Why am I doing this? It's a fantastic question. <laughs> just, a, just a wonderful question. You can like ACDC. I don't have a problem with that. It's just when you're like, hey, you got to listen to this ACDC song. And you're like, I already listened to it. It's called Thunderstruck, Highway to Hell, Hell's Bells, Dirty Deeds, Dunder, Cheap, Thunders. They, okay, they have two songs. Thunderstruck is almost like a, it's a real distinct entity. Every other song is was created in a lab to like... Get people hyped before a hockey game starts. Apart from that, I'm trying to think if I have any other lab partner stories. I have like an inverted lab partner story that might put a smile on your face. Uh, in 12th grade, I had a philosophy class, which is why I'm so well grounded and stoic. Um, and as we learned a lot in that class, as you can tell. Um, Anyway, we had to do a report. I don't even remember what the report is on. But when the report got assigned um, and groups were picked, two kids were sick. Me and then a kid who we would describe maybe as a slacker, okay? He was doing like a... He was doing a gap year and was not a particularly like academically minded individual. Uh, he was just kind of like... In... Which is fine, you know, he was 18, but... You know, he was at, he was doing a gap year or an extra year. Just because he didn't know what to do with his life, right? Which, again, at 18 makes perfect sense. Um, so we did the project, like we collaborated on it. The project turned out really well. And we both gave like a really good presentation at the end that got a great grade. And then, and it was a good teacher, okay? I want to say in advance, this is one of the best teachers I ever had. But the teacher came to me after and like made me stay after class and was like, hey, so be honest. Did the other kid actually do anything or did you do it all? 
And I was like, nah, for real. Like, he did 50% of it. Like, we split it right down the middle and we, you know, it was a group effort. And he was like, are you sure? Because, like, you know. I mean, he I don't remember him saying, like, you know, the other student has a bit of a reputation. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that was the subtext. And I was like, I was like, yeah, he did it. He did his work. It was not Malf. Mal Malf and I did not take leap years. We were like Bruce Springsteen songs. As soon as the, as soon as we got our cap and gown, we were born of me. In the day was pretty on the streets of a away Canadian dream. I think we're gonna go for this, man. Bruce Springs Springsteen, most overrated. Uh, yeah, most overrated by people who don't know anything about music. Born to Run is is top to bottom, like an absolutely fantastic album. Look at these dodges, dude. So true, bestie. Oh no, I got so true, bestie. <laughs> what I meant to say is 100 Gex beats Bruce Springsteen any day of the flippin' week. Send it. Good, good send, good send. We're not free, we're not free, what's happening? I hate this part. I do not like this part. What do we do here? Um, we, we gotta hit him. I'm presuming we have to, no, we don't have to hit him. We just have to live through the madness. Bro, stop it! You wanna you wanna play this game? Two can play this game. <laughs> okay, okay. Hmm. Saved. Play it cool. You're doing great. Look at that. Little two-step. I, I relish this opportunity to get some free damage. That was stupid, but we got a spirit heart somehow. Why am I so invincible? Empty vessel! Scapular and empty vessel, dude. Okay, we're just chilling. I'd like to chill with you. We're chilling. And I hope you like. Chilling two. We're chilling. Bob Marley. Just just referencing my meme. We're saved, we're not saved. That's okay though. That's okay. The the man is simply a genius. It's hard to handle this with the knockback. <laughs> I got him. I can't believe it. Dude, now that's a run. Now that's a run. <laughs> that one of the best fights I've ever had on, on whatever that boss is called. Bruce Springsteen. Oh, baby. Now we're talking. That's good gaming. Slash marker Bruce Springsteen.